Good morning and welcome to everybody. Here with Matt again. Hello. All right, so, hey, we got the one of the most famous chapters in the Bible. You ever been to a wedding? You probably heard this <laughs> passages from here. First Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter in the Bible. So we're going to dig into that in a little bit. Uh, we uh, we continue to uh, kind of make plans for when Penn State opens <laughs> up and I know you got some challenges there is deciding like uh, you know what is that going to look like uh, so normally you know, Matt would uh, be planning to have that um, Penn State has a, a clubs and activities fair at the beginning of the semester we're not sure if they're gonna have that or what it's gonna look like um, what access you're gonna have to the campus I guess you don't really know some of those things uh, <clears throat> Some of the campus ministries that meet on campus uh, will have limitations on size uh, and, and meetings in various buildings. For instance, the uh, Pastorelli Spiritual Center, the chapel, I heard it was limited to 32 people. Um, the and smaller then one, yeah. The smaller one, and then the bigger one might be like 100 or something like that. So, you know, out of 46,000 students, <laughs> you're talking about uh some big limitations and we don't know really about uh mass not mass so whatever it is you know whatever the rules are um so there's a lot of unknowns going into this uh <laughs> you got some challenges yeah, yeah. ahead so we'll, we'll we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna we'll pray at the end of this for i think all campus ministries that would be be good that the love of christ would go out into the campuses uh, really around the country i think it's not just penn state it's it's gonna be Pretty much all the universities are wrestling with this right now. And of course, uh, you know, the big thing everybody wants to know is football. <laughs> right? <laughs> well. I'm, I'm sure the, those, uh, like my, my sister probably listening in Oklahoma, I, I'm sure there's a big talk about, what is OU going to play football? Mm. Is, or Oklahoma State, you know, all those things. Mm. Right? <laughs> there might be a mass uh, revolt in Oklahoma if they don't have the football. <laughs> Uh, same with the here, South. probably though. Happy Happy Valley won't be too happy. No, <laughs> be a little sad valley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so First Corinthians chapter thirteen. We've got a little bit of breeze. It's uh, <laughs> it's kind of chilly this morning. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit cool. Cold front came through. Uh, very nice though. Beautiful day. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be really nice. So we're gonna look First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Matt's gonna kick us off. <clears throat> if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And continuing in verse 8, <clears throat> love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. All right, this is, again, very famous passage from the scripture. Uh, you probably, if you went to a, a wedding, you probably have heard this. So let's uh, go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we're thankful for this uh, day that you've blessed us with and the time together. Uh, we're thankful for the beauty of your creation. We're even thankful for the chirping of the birds that seems like they chirp extra loudly when we begin the Bible study. So we're <laughs> thankful, though, for the birds chirping and your presence in, in our life and for the hope that is ours in and through Christ. So lead us and guide us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so the previous chapter, Paul was talking about uh, unity in the body, spiritual gifts that people have, 
and and uh, then unity in the body of Christ, one body, many parts. And at the end of this, uh, end of that chapter, uh, when he's talking about uh, all the different spiritual gifts, at the end of chapter 12, he says, uh, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. And then in verse 31, he says this of chapter 12, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you still a more excellent way. Then Paul goes and he lays out what is really the higher the higher gifts, what really bonds every, binds everything together. And in this chapter, he's describing what is known as the agape in the Greek, the agape love of God. So he's describing, um, so in Greek there's, there's four different words for love. Uh, one of it's like a friendship kind of love. Uh, a brotherly kind of love. So Philadelphia, uh, city of brotherly love. Philo uh, is, is a brotherly kind of love. Uh, there's Storge, which is a friendship kind of love l Love uh, that's out there. Uh, and then there's one that's more um, Eros, which is more of a kind of an erotic uh, kind of love. Uh, but here he's describing agape love, which is fulfilled in the life and the work of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so, you know, when he calls us to this, uh, he's saying, hey, you know, I could be, have all kinds of gifts. I could speak in the tongues of angels. I could do all kinds of things. Uh, but he says, uh, and I could have all kinds of prophetic powers in verse two and understand all the mysteries and even have all knowledge. Uh, and uh, if I have all faith, but so is the Reuben Mountains, but I have not love, I have nothing. And so that's a very challenging, uh, I think, section of scripture for us. Uh, and especially in the times we're living in, how, well, it says and warns us in the scriptures that um, during the end of times, the end times, as we grow closer to the end times, the hearts of many people will grow cold. And there will be a lack of love. And, and I'm not, you know, I don't know when Jesus is going to return again. I don't know that. Uh, but it seems like we're in a culture in which uh, hearts are growing hardened. And they're growing cold. Uh, we're, we're not... Um, Caring for each other, we're we're quick to write off other people. We're quick to defriend them. We're quick to block them. We're quick to have nothing to do with them. We're quick to call them out. We're quick to put them in a, a certain box and say, "I'm done with you," and that's it. You're you're this. You're that. And um, you know, even if we are right, are we acting in love? And that's a very challenging thing for us in this in the culture in which we live. So as you kind of go through this, Matt, there's just some things that, <clears throat> like, if you would have, <laughs> put you on the spot here. Oh boy. <laughs> so you kind of look in verse like four and five and stuff like this. Uh, uh, is there any of these that jump out at you that says, boy, that's harder for me than some of the other things? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, there's kind of that laundry list starting in verse four, like you mentioned. Yeah. And maybe I should just kick it off with the first one there, right? Love is patient. Huh. Right off the bat, we're in trouble. <laughs> um, well, no, you're in trouble. I'm, I'm, oh, no, oh. no, I'm, trouble too. I'm in trouble too. Um, right. I mean, I think I could speak broadly. I think just yeah. as a society, you know, we are at uh, consumeristic demand, want it now uh, society. And I think that flows into all things. Love, um, anything. Yeah. So... Uh, but yeah, with love in particular, love is patient. So, um, you know, obviously letting go of your agenda for the betterment of others, um, oftentimes maybe in time regards, um, people aren't going to do things in the way you want, yep. um, <laughs> and still to treat them with respect and care and uh, love first and try <laughs> to understand their perspective. It's interesting, like even like uh, in a uh, even in a marriage relationship, um, there's a lot of things that we bring into a marriage relationship that are part of our family history 
that aren't things that are uh, moral right or wrongs, mm. but we have done it that way. And it's hard for us then to see it done a different way by our, by the sp our spouse and then this could be an area of conflict even. It's not a moral, it's not a right or wrong issue. It's just like, well, we always did things this way. This is the way we do it. And, uh, right. and it's hard for us. Uh, we, we, we struggle even in marriage relationships with these things. Um, uh, so yeah, all these things, do, do we always, you know, does not rejoice in wrongdoing is there, uh, it seems like we have a society, and I think Christians can fall into this trap. Is uh, you know, there's so many shows that used to be out there that were the kind of like trashy uh, afternoon shows, like the uh, Phil Donahue and, uh, and uh, who was the other one? There's Jerry Springer. Oh. All kind of, okay. Like like kind of say it's almost like we're rejoicing in wrongdoing, and then you see the tabloids in the checkout counter in the supermarket. It's like. Ooh, what did somebody do that's wrong? What did somebody, oh, what did this person do? What does that person do? And uh, so it's almost like we rejoice in wrongdoing in our culture. We want to, and maybe that's because we want to be able to think, uh, hey, at least I'm not like that other person. Hmm. I'm better than them. I don't do this stuff. And, and we kind of play that game. Mm -hmm. So easy to fall into. Do we rejoice with the truth? Or do we go along with the crowd? Do we rejoice in God's what God's word says, or are we swayed by the opinion of the day, which is which is going to change all the time? So, do we rejoice in the truth? Uh, are we ready to bear, bear all things? Uh, in other words, uh, that people uh, in many parts of the world, followers of Jesus, are persecuted today very vehemently. Are we able to? Are we able to? Or are we willing to put up with slights? Uh, we're not thrown into prison right now. We're not uh, dissuaded from speaking up. But are we in, let's say, if you're a high school student, college student, uh, are you willing to be put up with little pokes at your faith? People putting you down for your faith. Are you willing to, be, to bear with those things? Are you willing to believe what God's Word says and put your life into practice in that way? And the hope, the hope that is ours in Christ, and therefore endure through, you know, if you want to call it persecution, it's not persecution like other people are facing, but it's people, you know, pushing against your faith. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is a very powerful chapter that, I, you know, I would encourage everybody to really pray through, take your time and read it. It's only, what is it, 13 verses? <laughs> uh, take your time and really pray through this chapter. Um, and he reminds us then in verses 8 and following that a lot of these other things are going to go away. Things we get all worked up over. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> we're not going to need prophecies when we're in, the, in heaven. We're not going to, mm -hmm. we're going to be in the presence of God. <laughs> we don't need that. Tongues, we're going to be uh, in complete communication and fellowship with God and with each other. The walls that we all put up. You know, do we really know each other? Do I really know Matt in the in the deepest sense? Does he really know me in the deepest sense? Uh, does my wife know me in the deepest sense? No. All of us put up certain amount of of a wall, certain amount of barrier. But those things will be coming down, and we'll be able to interact with each other fully and completely. And he's uh, because he says, uh, "Now I know in part; then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known." Now, right now, I think it's a little scary for us. Do you want people to fully know you right now? <laughs> no, nobody does, right? I mean, right. That's why we put up the barrier, right? right. So there's there's a certain amount of walls that we put up because there's certain things that I've done in my life I'm not too proud of. I don't want anybody to know about that. I don't I don't want you know things everything to get out in there. And it's only under the blood of Christ that He covers us and says, "You're mine. I love you. I've forgiven you." And that when we're in our when we're in our pre, in his presence, fully forgiven, shame is not there anymore. Guilt has been taken away. Uh, shame is a um, is a a weapon of the devil to to shame a person. Yes, I'm guilty of sin, 
but that does not mean I have to live in shame uh, because I've been forgiven because of what Christ has done. That's what God's love does for us. He takes away uh, not only our shame, but he takes away our guilt. And so Satan is trying to tear us down by by having us believe, you know, here, here's the difference. is like guilt is I've done something wrong. Shame is I am something wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what Satan's trying to do. Guilt we can acknowledge. I've done things wrong. I need forgiveness. It's found in Christ. And he loves me perfectly. Uh, so, and he loves you, and he loves Matt perfectly. He loves all people. <laughs> right. He loves all of us perfectly. So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. God's love for us that is shown in through Jesus Christ. So, anything else as you kind of um, look through this? I was just going to make mention on that last verse that you just talked on. I think sometimes we're like, we think that love is just an add-on. You know, something extra to do. Yeah. And, you know, that... So now faith, hope, and love abide. These greatest of these is love. No, love is the core yeah. of everything we do. Yeah. Um, so that's just a good reminder there. It's everything that binds everything together. Uh, I, I, also, I was looking at uh, verse 11 too. Now, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. So when for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know. So here, here it is. You know, we are... A work in progress uh, God is working on us and even if I s study the scriptures and I do, I do study the scriptures all the time and I you know maybe have knowledge about that and you went to school for that that's not the be-all and the end-all mm -hmm. uh, and um, there are certain things I don't know the answer to that God has revealed what I need to know to be in relationship with him and then I will know fully when I'm in his presence. But right now, I only know in part. So, on this beautiful day, uh, you know, I encourage you to really kind of read and pray through this chapter. Uh, it's really a challenge. and But it's also a great picture of God's love for us. We fall short of this. <laughs> Jesus doesn't. Jesus has loved you perfectly. So let's pray for um, campus ministry, right? <laughs> All right. Um, so maybe, um, Matt, you can kick us off, pray for some of the students to be coming back, and then I'll, I'll close this off. Okay. Off. Heavenly Father, thank you for the time together. Uh, thank you for our study in this chapter of love. Help us to take these words to heart and to pray over them and to um, change our ways uh, in areas that we can learn to grow. Um, I want to pray for our students um, as they look to return and all the many unknowns of the school year. Specifically, want to lift up our international students as there's some unknowns there with travel mm, and restrictions yeah. and uh, getting visas, especially for incoming freshmen, and to just lift them up and to be with them during this time yeah. and to just guide them and to help them know that we are there for them. And gracious Father, I want to thank you for Matt uh, and all campus pastors. Uh, I pray that you would work through them in a mighty way whatever the scenarios in which they have to um, engage in trying to do ministry I pray that you would do way more than they think they'd be able to do whatever the restrictions are whatever those things are and I pray that students would be drawn to you right now that you're working on them by the power of your spirit you're preparing their hearts and their minds to receive the beautiful gift that you desire to give them in and through Jesus Christ so bless the campus ministries, bless our revived campus ministry, Lord God, work powerfully and mightily, drawing people to yourself. We pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Have a great day. Have a good day.